You're watching Weekend Sundays. Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. I am in no way, shape or form a fully qualified mechanic, auto electrician or auto HVAC technician. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. All right. Well, I think we can all agree on this fact. As a car gets older, things sometimes go a little haywire. And no matter how well you maintain your vehicle, that one thing that goes haywire can go haywire at the worst possible time. Now, we all know Old Mate has had multiple problems with that fusible link off the positive side of his battery in his 80 series. And I thought I was the only one having trouble. I have heard other people have trouble. And now I've been contacted by someone who's almost on a par with Old Mate when it comes to replacing that fusible link. As you can see in the background, it's 80 series time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech for weekend Sundays. This one, why does it pack up? Generally speaking, they don't usually, but sometimes there is a reason. One of the best four-wheel drives ever made. Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. It's 80 series time. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. You are watching Weekend Sundays here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. It is 80 series time and... Uh, well, I've only heard of a couple of people having this issue, but it appears as though this viewer is in a very similar boat, almost on a par with Old Mate. That fusible link off the positive side of the battery in an FZJ80R. Now, this viewer has a February 94 model. It's still, I think it's pre-facelift, but only just. I got this email... Uh, last Tuesday. This is from Patrick. Hi, Old Mates Backyard Tech. Recently discovered your channel and recently subscribed to your channel, watching a lot of your 80 series videos, and I want to thank you for your 80 series content. It's helped me out on a number of occasions. I must say you do know the 80 series relatively well. Well, as I own an 80 series Land Cruiser, you'd basically expect it. I'm curious to know, I've been having trouble with the fusible link off the positive side of the battery for some time. I've owned my 80 series for four years, bought it second hand with 390,000 kilometres on the clock. Okay, so it's finally worn in and settled down. But I'm on my third fusible link off the positive side of the battery. I had to buy another one back at the beginning of October. I do not understand why they keep blowing. Have you had trouble with yours? And if so, how have you fixed it? Or do you know why they keep going? Any help or advice would be appreciated. From Patrick. Um, yes, I have had trouble and I'd, I've never found out why. Um, the next time I replace mine, it'll be the fourth one. Um, I don't know. Look. Generally speaking, I, I'm, I'm being very, very general here, guys. Extremely general. We'll go out to the 80 series in a moment. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I'm being very general here, okay? So I don't want people thinking I'm being dead set specific. This is a massive generalization. They don't normally go. I have had my alternator tested. Um, I've had the power system tested. I do not understand why they let go. Now, two of my 80 series fans here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, Hobbs and Mark, have effectively what I've got. Oh, Mark's got a 95. Well, he's got a facelift. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I didn't stop the video recording. Uh, Mark has a 95. I think his is the facelift. Hobbs has basically my car. Just a slightly updated GXL, but it's effectively the update. Now, I don't know whether Hobbs has had trouble with his fusible relay. I don't know if Mark's had a trouble with his fusible relay or anyone else who enjoys the 80 series videos here. 
The next time mine lets go, it'll be the fourth one I take, Patrick, and I have not figured out why. Generally speaking, they're supposed to be. Um, I'm trying to think. One of my other viewers, who's a friend of mine, has it on their Holden. Oh, it's um, Andy. Gone Golding has a similar setup on his... Um, Berliner. I had, a, I had a mental blank there for a moment. Um, but going back to the 80 series, Patrick, look, the next time mine goes, I'll be on my fourth. I don't know why. Um, the one that's on there now, I went through two in 12 months of owning that vehicle. I'm on the third one now. The third one's been on there since late... 2015 or early 2016 so far so i'm on my third fusible link on that car at the moment now if it goes again and i've said this before i have had trouble with it if it completely goes again i'll be on my fourth i don't know why i've had the alternator checked i've had the power checked there's no reason why it lets go i do not know why um mark hobbs anyone else um They'll be able keep an eye on the comments, Patrick, because they'll be able to tell you. But I'll be on my fourth if that one lets go. Um, I don't know why. I I honestly don't understand why I, I'm on, I'll be on my fourth. Um, when I where I go or have been, and I know them very well. Um, Auto Alex here in Geelong who, when we had the family printing business, we used to print their business cards and everything for. So I know them not just from their reputation. I know them from within business circles as well. Um, I got them to actually have a look at it when I had the AC done. And they said there's nothing wrong with it. Not only that, they said the auto elect work I'd done on it was in spec anyway, so that's always nice to know. I've added to it since the AC got done. But down here, I mean, these auto elects are so good, there's a six to eight week wait to get into them sometimes. But from that point of view, I do not understand why they, they let go. Right? I honestly don't know. Um, which is, you know, having done DC power systems on, on LV not HVDC, but LVDC, um, both from a, a, um, a uh, oh, I can't think what it's called. Um, come on, you old mongrel, think. Voltage current and power um, relationship point of view, something like that. Um, the fact is, is that I have not got to the bottom of why I've gone through three of them already. And this, when this one goes, it'll be the fourth one I put in. I don't understand why. I, one theory I had initially when I went through two of them okay, was I got two bad, bad fusible links. That's all I could come up with. Um, may I just say this, though? Don't get rid of it and don't bypass it. If you do, I won't help you with your 80 series. It's as simple as that. Uh, they have to be there. But I have not figured out why they go because generally they're not supposed to go unless you've got serious electrical problems, which from a... From a surge point of view, I'm not suffering from. And I'm not pulling the alternator excessively hard or causing the regulator to throw a hissy fit, have a bit of a tanty. So I, I don't understand why. 
Um, unfortunately, Patrick, I'd love to say, yes, I know the problem and I know how to solve the issue and what causes it. I don't. And yet, the minute that one finally lets go, I'll be on my fourth fusible link. Let me grab the video camera. We'll head out to the 80 series. All right, so what I'm talking about is this thing right here. All right. Now, this is my third one. Now, these generally don't die, as I said, unless you're pulling too much through them. Now, this one here uh, goes into, if I can find where it goes into, goes into the harness where part of it runs down to the starter motor. Now, what happens when this does let go is I simply just do that with it and it comes up. All right? But why they let go, I do not know. Um, there may be an auto elect uh, that may be able to tell you if you are having problems with it though, Patrick, and you're finding you're going through them, you really probably, what I'd suggest, apologies for the wind, guys, what I'd suggest you do is take it to an auto elect that can do a really thorough inspection from the alternator to the battery to the starter motor to the fuse box. All right, get all that checked out. Um, other than that, I really, unfortunately, can't help you. They normally go because you're pulling too much current. So something's dragging it to let go. So we all understand that a fuse lets go when the current exceeds the rated value of the wire. Right? That's basically how a fuse works. It gets too hot and lets go. So in the case of my car, um, when I had the AC done, I asked them to check it. And they did, and I trust these guys very well. They have an exceedingly good reputation around Geelong. They're very well known and very well trusted. And they simply said there is no reason for that to go because your electrical system is in good condition. So why it let go, I don't know. I, I, I can't answer the question. But as I said, like any fuse, though, generally speaking, they let go because too much current. Right, so you may have the right amount of voltage, but you're pulling, you know, for an example, you might be, say, a 15 amp system, you pull 20, 20 something odd amps, 22 odd amps, the fuse lets go, you know, it melts. And um, so the only reason that should go is if you're dragging too much current through it. But in my case, I still have not got to the bottom of why I'm on my third one. I may never, this one may never go again. It may be perfectly legit now. And it could have just been that the first one um, was original to the car and it finally gave up the ghost and then I got two dud ones when, and then finally got the third one. Um, but as I said, I don't know. I can't answer that question, Patrick. Um, if it is, if you are having trouble with it and you're going through a number of them in pretty quick succession, I'd recommend getting a even if it costs you a lot of money, get a very reputable, very knowledgeable, probably better with a four-wheel drive electrical system than just an ordinary car electrical system. Get someone to go over it with a fine-tooth comb and go right through from the alternator, through here, right, through here, through here, down to the starter motor, your, um, your injector system, uh, your ignition system, dizzy, everything. Right, because you may find there's something causing it. So unfortunately, as much as I'd love to give you a 100% a reason why they let go, I simply can't because I've never found out myself. And if your electrical system is in good condition, you shouldn't be going through them. So, you know, I, unfortunately, I can't give you a 100% a, a, a guarantee answer. One other option you've got before we finish this video, one other option you've got is to have a look at the current going through it as you start the engine. All right, find out how hard the starter motor's pulling. All right, because if, if the starter's pulling too much, that could be your reason. Okay, that I'm not saying that is the reason, all right, but I'm saying it's one option. Check your, your voltage drop across your battery at crank, cold crank, all right, and check your, your current draw at cold crank. 
Not necessarily warm crank because it doesn't take as much guts to start an engine warm as it does cold. But just have a sticky beak at what it pulls. Your voltage drop across your battery at startup, all right? Anything under about 10.8 volts, your car probably won't start. Uh, anything under 9 volts, it'll never start. But also get a current draw on the system as well. Find out if it's pulling the system down um, because your starter motor might be pulling too much power. That's one option, but I'm not, I don't want people thinking that's, that's the only option. It's one option. All right. Now, if that is the case that it's blowing because the starter motor's pulling out, get your starter checked or get your start circuit looked at. But I can't guarantee you that'll be the reason why it's going, all right? I don't want people saying that, all right, so there's only one reason it goes. I'm saying that might be the reason it goes. Anyway, there we go. 80 Series here at Old Mates Backyard Tech. That's it for weekend Sundays here at Old Mates Backyard Tech. That's it for weekends as well. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, whatever you're doing. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. If you're planning on just being a fat, lazy slob stumped up in front of the TV for the entire day, you have my utter blessing. Because that's exactly what I'm going to do. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. I'll catch you around the channel tomorrow. Have a good one. This has been an Old Mate's Backyard Tech presentation.